So you probably didn't expect to hear me again after a month, but uh, I jumped into the opportunity to show a few more slides. And um, today I'll, um, I'll be talking about design build teaching. Um, and obviously I'll look into my own perspective and uh, my own experience, uh, mostly from Warsaw, but also uh, from some experience that is um, things that happened here in Wellington. Um, so basically the design build teaching method is in, in its most pragmatic is all about um, kind of giving the students exposure to hands-on building materials and sites. So in a, in a perfect situation, you want to have a um, situation where you go through all the stages of design from um, the idea, the narrative, to the, to the concept, to um, documentation and uh, uh, through construction. And um, I don't know how easy that is in architecture to do that during a st studio class, but uh, we were trying to do this in landscape architecture and most of the studios that I teach in Warsaw, I try to give uh, students at least the chance of uh, finish up the studio with um, the potential of, uh, of construction. And um, this, is, uh, this, is, this is why we are in recent years looking at smaller scale projects like um, parklets, so kind of extensions of pavements and taking over parking spaces uh, more permanently and um, working with uh, city councils to actually construct those, um, um, uh, those designs, uh, construct the projects at the end of the uh, studio class. But with these kind of projects, it usually takes much longer than uh, just one class and you have to uh, wait you know a year or two for the ex uh, actual construction so a lot of times the students leave the leave the city they're not involved in the uh, construction so that posed a problem within the method method because there a lot of times even if they uh, were the ones that were chosen to build build this uh, uh, parklet or this uh, structure uh, they won't be there for the construction even if if that would be allowed so um, for example this is something that um, is supposed to be constructed soon uh, hopefully there is uh, media attention to this and this is uh, mm, uh, project from the, from the studio class. Another uh, project that is actually being constructed uh, was a part of a student competition that we organized and it was actually for students not only it wasn't a closed competition for students from my class only as it usually is. This time it was open and students from a different university won it and this is this is the project for the parklet this is the little parking space actually it's not an official parking space but people park in it anyway uh, so we wanted to turn it into a, a more attractive a little uh, parklet which is a little uh, parking space and this is the design and here is the construction uh, photo from a couple of a uh, couple of days a couple of days ago um, and because those studio classes um, have uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's not enough time to finish it off with being and actually constructing the, um, those uh, parklets or, 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 or those structures. We have, in the first year of master class, we have a little studio that is called uh, Landscape Art Workshop. When we look at um, actually the whole process. We start with the idea, we really start with the story. We want students to um, talk about their project first and give us the idea what this project is about or what this uh, little garden or landscape art project is about and then go through all the process, the whole process and actually they have, they have to do, even for the funniest little uh, art projects, they have to do the whole document documentation like they would do landscape uh, proper landscape project. So they start with the concept, the conceptual des design, they, they have to do project documentation, they are involved in the public um, procurement or the acquiring of materials, they can acquire the materials themselves, but a lot of times they have to acquire it through the university uh, uh, in, a, in a very official way. And we do, so this is a project that was done outside of a campus uh, and it was just done with reused materials. This is, this is uh, conceptual project and this is the uh, student working on the site and a lot of times it's just like one day thing and they have to uh, find materials on site and uh, do something with them kind of right away as a as a quick project but in this 
uh, the, the projects that we did in campus uh, during the garden landscape art workshops, um, yeah, students were tasked to build those temporary show gardens or show landscapes oper operating with very low implementation budgets, reusing materials and elements of previous uh, gardens sometimes. And this results in those kind of ephemeral installations that are balanced, balancing somewhere between the practice of gardening or landscape architecture and uh, landscape, landscape art. Um, so these are the results and this um, is, goes for about three months and they start with just a, a kind of a, a narrative, go through the conceptual design and then um, through all the, pro they have to do the documentation, present the documentation to us and um, uh, acquire the materials and then construct it in our uh, campus. Uh, which is a kind of a suburban suburban campus, so we have a park that uh, allows um, uh, installations like this uh, to be to be completed. And there's a various different installations, as you can see. They're usually quite light, quite temporary, but uh, we think there's a big value in uh, students actually using shovels, using uh, uh, plant, planting plants, uh, digging in the ground. Uh, and um, as much as you know this uh, virtual um, environment that we have now for teaching is is has some advantages i think at some point we'll miss this kind of involvement in the in the real thing and where students can work together in a um, real physical space and uh, build something together because it's i think it's a very important experience some of those projects uh, that, that students did we moved or we re uh, also did in uh, galleries in art galleries um, so this is one of art galleries in warsaw that kind of acquired our uh, student works and we moved some of the landscape installations into a gallery space the next move for us us was to um, create kind of a garden festival we um, really were inspired by um, garden festivals such as uh, in, uh, Chamon sur Loire in France or um, the Jardin de Métis in uh, Quebec in Canada or even Chelsea Flower Show and wanted to do something in, in, in Poland and for a smaller scale. And we first approached um, uh, nurseries and garden centers and thought we we're going to do something at their, uh, in their land and working with them and, this, and it could be a kind of a good way of promoting their, their, um, uh, their businesses but that didn't work after a lot of meetings and, uh, and uh, a lot of approaches and finally we started working with Arboretum, um, a beautiful garden that was unfortunately quite a ways from Warsaw so wasn't maybe so attractive for the students, but students still had the choice of doing this um, landscape art workshop and re building their project in a very small budget, uh, as a very small budget project on the campus or having a little, little bit bigger budget and maybe more exposure in this uh, Arboretum new um, festival. And there is some just slides from the festival. This is some of it is our students' work, some of this is uh, teachers' work, and some of it is students from different universities as well. Mm. So when I think about urban campuses, um, and what we also did with students in, in Warsaw, we actually used um, something that is called Parking Day. I'm, I'm sure uh, most of you heard about Parking Day, which is a temporary arrangement of parking spaces. And it's uh, usually one day event, and it's being held here in, in Wellington for a few years now. And it's uh, popular in pretty much all over the world, in New Zealand as well. This is 2009 event in, in Warsaw. And um, so we think that this, uh, because actually I worked in, with Maria uh, on an article recently and we studied um, the shift in uh, parking day from um, kind of, uh, I would say a very uh, guerrilla uh, um, uh, action, very uh, 
grassroots uh, action to being now um, identified as more uh, official uh, uh, events uh, done by uh, city council or as it is in Wellington by, by Sculpture Trust. But this, we, we think that this um, parking day is a great event because it already has some kind of structure to pre and presents the chance of this de design build thinking as and use it as a um, pedagogical um, educational tool uh, and uh, build something in a community uh, uh, context. They, those tables maybe don't show it very well, but there is, uh, we studied the way it moved from this uh, grassroots guerrilla uh, protest uh, as it was at the beginning, just taking over one parking space at a time and creating a tempor temporary park there into and morphing into something that is much global, very global reach, educational, artistic and creative, quite commercial and, and official and could be used by uh, city council or is used by city councils, by whether it's culture trust or could be used by the uni university as well uh, as, a, as a already a structure, structure event. Um, it poses some pro problems because of the of the dates, but as I talked to um, people from the Wellington Trust, they are willing to maybe move the dates and kind of adjust it to the uh, semesters and uh, teaching uh, schedules in at Victoria University of Wellington, and are very um, very open to have more students uh, and uh, uh, being involved in this and building. And actually, everybody who is involved in this and um, proposes their 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 little park parklet or parking space installation, they they get a bit of a. a bit of a budget, some money to, to build it. So I think it's a great opportunity to stu for students and actually uh, some students, maybe not, I'm not sure if they're from, from um, architecture department, but students from colleges and um, from uh, in different cities from, uh, from different universities were involved. And these are some, uh, we were, Maria and other few other people we are representing uh, Victoria University this year, uh, but uh, there's quite a lot of very interesting um, installations done uh, throughout the years, throughout the last five years, um, as you can see. And this is uh, really gives a chance for for the students to um, to have uh, to, to be noticed, to have a kind of. Uh, situation when they're confronted with real people, real real situation, when they have to build something rather quickly, they have to be very innovative, they have to be resourceful. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's a good um, good way to train your um, uh, ideas coming into life to, 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 to go from concept to, uh, to actually something, even if it's simple, but something built. So Parking Day is a recognized established event, presents a, an attractive structure, method or technique that can be incorporated in courses at several levels of education and has particularly, um, is, is important for landscape architecture and architecture students, I think. Um, those events enable uh, students to be hands-on, see the results of their work, dis discuss topical issues with public, uh, design and work as a team and explore ex upcycling and low budget strategies and, and, and some environmentally friendly design. And actually, Maria just um, uh, messaged this to me yesterday. I think that there's a continuation of Parking Day, which is uh, in, in Wellington, that is called Picnics for Parks. And now uh, more uh, spontaneously, um, groups of uh, young people are uh, uh, or maybe not the only young people uh, are using um, those parking lots and taking this idea and, and, and making it something more more than just one day uh, uh, one day a year. So um, so yeah, I think I think like I said, we have the situation right now when we're really focused on online teaching and we're. Um, thinking a lot about virtual environments and 3D modeling. But for me as a designer and uh, educator, I think it's such a huge value in um, bringing some idea into, into life and seeing it built and building it yourself with your own hands. And we should not forget about this element of, of, uh, of, of teaching. And um, yeah, and there's few situations like this, parking day, uh, which is very simple, but very temporary, but could be a, a, 
a nice educational um, tool and um, situation where students can get and, and teachers can get involved and somehow this could be incorporated in, in classroom teaching. Thank you. Thank you, Christoph. Um, yeah, that I'd like to be in your class. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds exciting to be able to, you know, create, be able to create, you know, something at the end of it as opposed to it sitting on paper. Um, and I, I, I like the fact that um, it would be great to be able to change the date because um, it really is sort of out of sync with our our teaching timetable, isn't it? But from from uh, when I talked, um, does anyone no. have any questions? Okay. <laughs> I'll find a nice picture. I think this went much faster than I thought. I was talking to, for 15 minutes instead of 25. Mm -hmm. I think um, Marie, oh, Marie. Yeah, I've got a question. Um, you've been doing this for a while, Christoph, this um, projects like this image on the screen. What can you can you see um, how, the benefits of this in students later later work that they do when they're in practice? Mm -hmm. Sort of looking back, can you see the benefits of this sort of thing? Um. Well, I, I think I'm not sure if I can see that in their practice and not, I'm not always, I don't always keep um, very much in touch with the students and look at their work five or 10 years after they graduate. But what I can say, um, when they approach us and, and me after, after this class, they, they a lot of times say that, well, this is the only class when we had to think about costs uh, and about materials. Um, in a way of uh, being very, very realistic, and that the ideas had, that they realize that in design, the first idea that you have is going to change so many times, and uh, the shape of the build structure, the you know, you know you're, even if it's a little installation like this, it's, even if it's a little piece of a garden it's going to look so much different than it looks um, on your first sketches. The, the problem that I see in a lot of design classes that is that students get, get very used to their first ideas and they're not very flexible. Um, and then um, this prospect of this being built and going through all the phases shows them that, you know, actually your design is going to look very different from your, your first your first sketches so that gives them that um, opportunity to see this um, so i think it's it helps them grow and actually and yeah one of the things is yeah where are you going to get the materials from because you have to be quite resourceful we have some budget and they can um, uh, order some materials but they actually have to go through the official procedure in the university we have to gather all the materials uh, i mean all the material needs together and uh, um, as a group uh, provided to the um, office in the university where they do prepare it as a you know like a public tent there or whatever if it's like uh, uh, so it's a very official procedure and they're really annoyed about this a lot of times and sometimes they choose just to bring their own stuff or buy independently. So they, you know, they're exposed to a, a lot of kind of realistic things that are mm. in the real world outside of the campus. Mm. And I guess having to, um, having to actually build it, they're constantly kind of brushing up against constraints, which, yes. as you say, yes. um, you know, forces people to have to, iteratively change design um, in a way that if you're just doing it on paper, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times they are very, very ambitious, you know, uh, so they think about, you know, the, the, a structure that holds something has to be a, a thick concrete pole or, you know, a, a metal element, or, and then they figure out it can be a little piece of wood and it's it's going to work too i mean in the, uh, in a way they they're really uh, 
exp they, they change the materials, they, they experiment with different materials, different than they, that they um, proposed at the, at the beginning because of the uh, of budgeting, but also because of the ease, like some of the things would be too difficult to construct. Um, Mm. Um, it also, I'm um, just looking at this this shot full of, I mean, most of what we're seeing is plants and a lot of the students in landscape architecture, they, um, some of them, you know, have never planted a plant. And um, oh, yes. you know, while, yes. while we encourage that, and particularly in the, in the course that I teach, I really, you know, often take them and get them to, you know, hands-on or at least witness the planting of a plant, you know, without the plastic bag attached still. Mm -hmm. um, and that this is, I, I really like how this is, you know, you're getting the hands, you know, really dirty in the dirt, in the soil, which... Um, it's, it's, it's true, yeah. With, with our, um, you know, like first year of studies, they have some kind of experience of uh, trimming plants and w working with plants and going to the greenhouses, but it's usually, you know, it's not, it's not really planting uh, or it's not thinking about how it's going to grow in this situation and or what the soil is. And if you dig out, you know, huge pieces like stones or whatever, the, you can't put shovel in the ground because it's clay and you know stuff like that they they um yeah they don't tend to think about it so they really confronted with this reality of of, of earth material plants and yeah mm. and they have to dress differently to class you know <laughs> yeah. they, they don't wear high heels and stuff like that yeah <laughs> any final questions No. Well, thank you very much, uh, Christoph, for, for, um, for putting something together quickly again for us. So uh, mm -hmm. thank you to get a, a different perspective from your earlier talk. Um, and yeah, it's been really great to, to have you along these two times. So thank you for your, for your contributions. Yeah, thanks for inviting me again. Um, sure, yeah. Great, thank you.